All right. I'm on uh, page 10 of Geometry 5, uh, page 1113, okay? And um, page 10, there's a lot of terminology. And I, and I know what happens sometimes. You look at all that and say, let me just get to the bottom line. How do I use it? Um, but it's really important that we learn what these terms are and what they mean, okay? So I wish this was in color, okay? We could see, look at the pie, figure three and four, and we have these pies. Um, what's your favorite pie? Apple pie or cherry pie, pumpkin pie? I made the mistake one year at Christmas of telling my students that I love pecan pie, which I do, but that's a very sweet pie. And three people gave me pecan pies for Christmas. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't get anybody in my family to help me eat them. So I froze one, I shared one, and then I gradually ate my way through the third one. But um, let's, picture, let's picture pumpkin pie here, all right, for figure three. <clears throat> one of the terms that we need to know is... All right, let me find the center here. Da, 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 da. So, <clears throat> let's just, eh, I'm going to guess that this is 50 degrees. I'm just guessing, okay? I didn't measure that. But if that's 50 degrees, this is called the an, a central angle. Central angle means it includes the center of the circle, okay? And this arc, okay, so from right here, this piece of the circle, this rounded part of the circle is called an arc, and let's use some letters here, A and B, okay, so we could call this, put a little rainbow over it, arc, arc AB, ha, ah, I was just thinking about Noah, Noah and the arc, you know, arc, all right, so uh, arc AB <coughs> would also be 50 degrees. So we can measure an arc in degrees, and this arc is 50 degrees, this is 50 degrees, okay? And actually, any arc that I would put inside of here, you know, if I drew an arc right here, that would be 50 degrees from here to here. It's 50 degrees from here to here, okay? No matter where you draw it. <clears throat> now, Let's think about this. If this is 50 degrees, let me put the letter C way out here somewhere, okay? How many degrees would this big arc out here be? Arc ACB, all right? Well, how many degrees are in a circle? 360, right? So if this is 50, <coughs> excuse me, then this would have to be 310 degrees, okay, does that make sense? So again, a little bit of algebra, okay, not hard, but we're sticking a little bit of algebra in here with the geometry. Another term we need to know, and that is if we're talking about um, a half circle, so let's say we come all the way straight across, half a circle is called a semi-circle, if we're talking about an arc that's less than 180 degrees, less than a semicircle, then it is called a minor arc. So this would be a minor arc, 50 degrees. If this truly is 180 degrees, okay, a semicircle, and this is 50 degrees, then how many degrees would arc AC have to be? Uh, again, a little bit of math. We know this is 180 because it's a semicircle. We know this much is 50, so this arc AC would be 130 degrees. Would that be a major arc or a minor arc? Minor arc, okay? <clears throat> now, a major arc is larger than a semicircle, so a C, B, going all the way around here. I should have already called this point C up here, all right? Calling this A, C would be 130, okay? So all the way, so this is, putting all this together, 310, this is a major arc, this is a minor arc, all right? Uh, let's see, measure of a semicircle, measure, okay, congruent midpoint of an arc, 
bisector of an arc. Okay, bisect just means it's cutting it in half, right? <clears throat> so if I have a line segment that comes through here and bisects this arc, I don't think I drew that very well, but that would mean this would be 25 degrees, wouldn't it? And this would be 25 degrees. And out here, from here to here would be 25, and here to here would be 25 degrees, okay? So it's just some simple maths and a little terminology there. I would encourage you to um, read through <coughs> page 10, study the examples there at the bottom. And uh, remember when they put an M in front of it, that's actually what I should have done. That means the measure of arc AB, and then we give it a number, okay? And over here, the measure of AC is 130. So we would say that, um, okay? Now the, uh, the angles might be congruent, um, like over here, let's look at this. Okay, is this arc congruent to this arc? And that's a tricky one. Congruent, what is the difference? You remember this? We talked about this in the first pace. Equals versus congruent. <clears throat> Equals means the measure of something. If this is 50 degrees, how many degrees is this arc? Okay, that would also be 50. How many degrees is this arc? That would also be 50, okay? So these, the measure of those arcs would be equal, but congruent means that two things are the same exact size. Now think about this. If I picked up this little arc right here, and I could actually pick it up and move it and lay it on top of this one, does it completely cover it? Is it exactly the same size? And the answer is no. All right, it's kind of tricky. So congruent means the same exact shape, all right, where you can lay one on top of the other and they match perfectly, okay? Equals relates to the degrees, okay, the measure of the degrees. So two, these two could be con equal to each other in the measures and not be congruent. Are you confused yet? All right. That is the difference between these. This relates to the actual physical set of points that make up that shape, whereas this is the measure of something. I think you actually have to do Something related to that perhaps on page 11. Yeah, question nine on page 11, I think that might uh, be a little tip to help you there. And then at the bottom of page 11, again, just using that one figure, and that calls it a challenge problem, okay? And it's because we're doing a lot of, um, a lot of algebra. And they give you numbers to plug in. I would, if I were you, this is what I would do. I would take your pencil and write in the degrees for angle one angle three, okay, and A, B, okay, and, you know, fill in whatever they, whatever they give you, try to figure that and then figure out what the missing ones are, and then you should be able to go back and figure out the rest of these angles. These are all numbers because they have measure of those things, okay? So do your best with that, and um, continues there on page 12 doing some more of that type and then some more proofs. I'm going to meet up with you again in a couple more pages.